Can we miss it? There's a sun instead of any. Ah, okay. Not an upgrade. <laughs> At, at last, no questions about contracts, then. Wow, Yeah, we've been talking about the start you've had so far, the 16 games, 14 wins, one draw, one defeat. And of course, dispatching the Bundesliga champions is a, is a very good way to continue that as well. Have you been surprised at just how well this start has been for you and for Liverpool this season? I don't think su surprise is the right word to use because I knew the quality of our team um, but quality is one thing but to be consistent is the second thing and um, I'm not surprised in this because from the moment I started working with them I saw how much energy they put in on a daily basis and that is I think the reason why you can be consistent if you bring if you do the work on a daily basis every day you can be consistent and then sometimes a bit of luck comes with that as well. Uh, uh, most of our results were, I think, deserved, but some of them were a close call. And then, um, yeah, then you have maybe a bit of luck as well. But in general, not surprised because of um, the quality I already thought that was in the team. And when I started working with them, I also saw how much effort they put in to get these results. Um, and after Villa and Southampton, this intense period then continues. You've got Real Madrid, Man City, Merseyside derby in there as well. With, with this sort of challenge that's coming up, and how are you managing the expectations within the squad, especially after this start? Oh, I'm not trying to manage expectations with the squad um, because we don't talk about expectations. They are, we do talk about expectations and the only expectations I have is that they put the same effort in on a daily basis like they've done for the last past three or four or five months and probably for the last six or seven years, but I was, I'm was i only here for three or four or five months now. That's the only expectation there is, uh, that they work every day as hard as they can to get their habits, uh, our habits, what we want to see on the pitch in the best possible way. And with that, normally results come as well, but uh, I'm not asking them to win every game. I am hoping them they do. What I do ask from them is that they, they put the effort in on a daily basis. And um, that's the only thing we focus on. And I think the players, first of all, think about after Saturday, they think about the national team. And when they come back, then we focus on the games you were just talking about. Um, you talked about effort there. I know you've mentioned intensity as well. We've seen some really like improved performances. That's the right word from, from the likes of Luis Diaz, for example. And... Curtis Jones on a different level, it seems. What are you doing with those individuals specifically to kind of bring this extra level out? Did you feel? Uh, with Curtis, maybe it's not me who did it because he became a father and I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, <laughs> You never know if that uh, plays a part of or, or not. But uh, it is since the moment uh, he became a father, he started... Uh, putting uh, great performances in uh, and he already did this in, uh, in, in in the first few weeks that we worked together in pre-season I was like Phew. quality player but then his performances dropped a bit but since the moment he like I just became father he's outstanding again and yeah I, I don't think it might have to do a bit with that but in general I think it has to do with the way the team plays because every team player that comes in uh, has a good performance and that probably tells you a lot about the quality of the team how they play together uh, that then as a result of that individual performance uh, are good as well so parents would make you a better player perhaps <laughs> uh, in his situation it seems like this so uh, let's wait if that is true you need sleep <laughs> um, Anna, just to build on some, something you were asked there, in terms of the expectation, you, you spoke about what it's like with the players amongst the squad, but the, the wider sort of Liverpool group, the fans, all the noise around the club, the start that you've made has been historic, it's been remarkable. So do you try and keep a lid on people's expectations of, of you and your team, or do you allow people to dream a little bit? Um, I always feel and think that... Uh, what what the outside world is talking about that is not always what comes inside the training ground like the AXA or at my former clubs at Feyenoord. You are there, we are there to do our work uh, and to become a better player on a daily basis or 
to keep having the same level. So we are not inside this building. Okay, the screens are on and we see all the time uh, all these news coming along, but ne never on the news it says, oh, Liverpool is doing great, Liverpool is doing great. So uh, we are just here uh, to do our work and it's not that it is the first time that this, that this club is where it is at the moment. So it's I think for most of these players, it's a normal situation. And I don't think they get carried away at all by us being top of the league at the moment because they know how small the margins are when it comes to our results and also how small the margins are when you look at the amount of points we are ahead of, of the other teams. And what about the fans? Do you ask them to, to keep their feet on the ground or are you quite happy for them to to get excited and, and wonder about what, what can come? Uh, if the end result is of them being excited to bring the atmosphere they brought in the second half against Brighton and the whole game against Liverpool, I'm hoping they will keep exci being excited for as long as they possibly can be because that atmosphere helped us in both games a lot. So, um, yeah, maybe that's your answer. Lee Carsley said that Curtis Jones is one of the best players he's worked with in terms of ability. How far would you go with that and what makes him such a good player? Um, what makes him such a good player? Um, he has a lot of qualities on the ball. Uh, when he has the ball, he's, he's, he's never afraid to do something special with it. Sometimes that led uh, to a situation that, in my opinion, he touched the ball a bit too much uh, because sometimes he's a bit too overconfident. Um, but confidence is, a, is an important tool and that's what he has. And he combines this at the moment and probably for, for a longer period, but as long as I'm working with him, with an incredibly hard work rate. And we can trust him in defense as well. You saw how well he played against Cole Palmer. So he's quite complete, but for him now, and I used this word I think a few days ago, for him now it's all about consistency. Because if you're a quality player, I think they're all quality players. And to have a good performance once in a while, that's not a big accomplishment. But the best players in the world show up every three days. And if he wants to continue progressing, that's what he has to show now to be. Every three days, the player he's been for us in the last few weeks. And Andy Robertson's been the first choice left back at Liverpool for a few years now. You've been giving Simicast a few starts lately. Is there much of a gap between those two for you? I think uh, my lineups tell you what I what I think about this. I think we have two very good fullbacks, and we play many, many, many games. So. Um, then I think both of them need their games because it's also a position where a lot of effort is being asked. So if you look at the players that have played most games, it's most about our centre-backs and they don't run the most uh, if you compare that to full-backs or to midfielders or to wingers. So there are multiple reasons why our full-backs or midfielders are sometimes rotated, but definitely also has to do with the quality of the players and the difference, in, 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 at least in my opinion, between the quality of these players. So for me, I have two very good left fullbacks. Andy has started a lot. Costas has started a few times. Let's see who starts Saturday. Hi, Arne. Um, in terms of the contract situations of <laughs> Ken Turtle and Mohamed Salah, you're obviously gonna, going to have an equal. So from your point of view, would you like them to stay beyond the next one? <laughs> 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 uh, it would be strange if I have no input uh, uh, although I'm a head coach now and sometimes that's uh, convenient to say I'm a head coach I'm no longer the manager so talk about contract situations with someone else now I think in general contract situations are talked about by the people who should talk about it I'm one of them but I should not talk about this in public so I do talk about this uh, with Richard and um, and that's the place where we have to talk about it and not in front of a microphone uh, with you guys. Carl? Um, you tried a, a few options in your central, or to have a central attacking rate, the central forward. You know, you've had one, you've had two, you've had a false nine. Is, th is that situation you see will continue to be fluid in terms of who plays there and who you deploy there? And uh, that depends also on the availability of the players. Uh, so when we had Darwin and Jogo available, we, we always played one of those two. Uh, the moment uh, Jogo was not longer available 
And uh, in my opinion, because we play so many games and Darwin didn't play in the first games, it was too much for him. So that's why we started to come up with other ideas. To be honest, I liked especially the last idea. Uh, <laughs> I think every Liverpool supporter did with Lucio scoring three goals, two as a nine, one as a winger. So uh, that's always interesting to see. Uh, but but um, Lucio is also a very good left winger. At this moment, we've got four attackers available for three positions. Um, so we could come up with another idea again. But if Joko comes back, Darwin is back. Then, um, then we've got two number nines available again. And uh, in the beginning of the season, I always chose one of one of these two. But like I said, Lucio did really well, and it was uh, even for me maybe a bit of a surprise to see how well he did. Of course, I played him there for a reason. <laughs> I expected him to do good, but that he did so well, that was even a surprise for me. Um, you mentioned Joe there. Uh, just on to general news. Any idea when he'll be back and any other interviews? Yeah, yeah, we expect him back after the international break. Now, after the international break, is six or seven months to go. So, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, the first weeks after the international break, we expect him back. What is his injury? Yeah. Uh, I always say in Holland there's privacy about this and uh, I don't know how it is over here but uh, he's, um, he, he's like I just said he will be back one or two weeks after the international break well, Bayern, after Leverkusen you mentioned that managers seem to come to Anfield and change their game plan a lot thinking about Aston Villa they've got such depth in their squad not only in personnel but in terms of style when you think about the difference between maybe a John McGinn or Leon Bailey in the right wing, or even Edgy Contra a right back, or Edgy Contra a centre back. With the team so many options, but are also in a bit of a bad moment at the moment, how hard is it to try and game plan for all the different permutations? If you ask me now, I would say it's not that difficult because um, uh, Unai Emery has played in a similar style for years now at Aston Villa. It's it's almost always the same uh, uh, formation. But it sometimes depends on a on a player uh, that you can have different characteristics. But his his style of play, his idea about football has been the same always. Saying this, that also was the situation with Xabi Alonso, who uh, we we studied for I don't know how many games, but never once he came up with the idea of playing Boniface as a left winger. Uh, and playing without a number nine that he hasn't done at all uh, before we played them. But that's maybe also a compliment. They, they, um, most managers feel uh, that we have a very good team, so they think they have to change their game plan, not their playing style, but their game plan a bit. Um, if you ask me now, do you expect uh, Unai uh, to change a lot? I would not expect that because he never did this. Not if, if he played City, not. And also not when he played Liverpool in the past few years. But in terms of personnel, he can change a bit, like you just said. He has different option in the fullback, different option in the wings. But it's always been a 4-4-2 uh, that he's, uh, he's been playing for many years now. Thank you both for the play talks. No? Just one here. Hi, Anna. Um, just on Luis Diaz, his, his goal conversion rate has gone from 9% last season to 29% in the league this season. Have you done any particular work with him just on improving that? That means that uh, he shoots 10 times on goal and scores three. Is that the conversion rate you mean? Or? Yeah, it just means he's, wait, he's much better from the goal this season. <laughs> That's what we all see, that he has better numbers than he had last season. I have no clue uh, why that is. The only thing I can come up with is that the team provides a lot of chances for these players as well. Because if if Diogo is playing, he scores. If Darwin play, is playing, he scores. If uh, Lucio is playing as a left winger, he scores. But, he all, but uh, Cody also scores as a left winger. So that tells me uh, that the team is providing goals for these great individuals and these these players all have the qualities that's why they play for Liverpool if they are in a in a promising situation they they can score a goal and um, that's what I make of it but yeah it's difficult for me to compare it with last season the only thing I can tell you is how, how I see it this season Thank you,